Hi everyone, it's Melinda, and today we're going to be looking at a jam-packed collection of my Amazon night. I actually have even more of these, <laughs> but couldn't fit them all into the frame. I just love them so, so much. Uh, so Amazonite is sort of a trade name for a bluish green uh, gemstone that often has streaks running through it. It's a colored variety of microclean, which is a potassium rich member of the feldspar family. So Amazonite is actually a type of feldspar and feldspar is one of the most common minerals in the world. Uh, Amazonite would obviously be a little bit more rare than feldspar, but isn't necessarily a rare mineral. Uh, although it can still come with a bit of a price tag if you're looking for pre-made jewelry or cabochons, that kind of thing. Uh, sometimes at gem shows and mineral stores you will see Amazon Night labeled as Colorado Jade or Pikes Peak Jade because of its its resemblance to jade, however, it is absolutely not jade. Uh, I'll start by showing you one of my purchased pieces. This is actually my one and only purchased piece. It has a really nice deep blue, however, not very much veining. So I stopped purchasing Amazonite pretty quickly when I found out that it was uh, accessible here in Ontario. There's actually a couple of different varieties that I'm familiar with, and there are probably certainly many others. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm starting with my collection uh, from the Norland area. It is very glossy. None of this has been polished. This is its natural gloss. Very reflective and it's very translucent. If I get closer you can see all of the different textures and layering going on within the stone. It is absolutely gorgeous. It mostly has, from that area, lighter colored veins. However, there are a few that have a little bit of that impressive pinkish look, salmon -y color. Look how dark that gets. <laughs> So the ancient Egyptians made beautiful jewelry and ornamental pieces out of this stone, and that's what, what actually made Amazonite quite famous. Uh, the folk name for Amazonite is the Amazon Stone, and it was called that because it was believed that the stone came from the Amazon River. That's actually not true. It did not come from that area. Which ones have I done now? <laughs> So shiny. Quite dark on this side. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get my big piece of that. It is not a beauty. I love all of that veining and texturing on the inside.
I feel like this one is even more textured. Like not only does it have vertical lines, but there are like teeny tiny horizontal lines as well. Almost like lace. I love this piece. <clears throat> I have too much of it in my personal collection because every piece is kind of unique, you know? I just can't say no. <laughs> so I put this piece in the collection. Um, it's just very lightly uh, turning to Amazonite here. I tried to. I tried to be Amazonite. There's that little bit of tinge. Uh, but I included it because I wanted to mention that Amazonite does often grow alongside with uh, smoky quartz, as you can see here. And that orangey tinge is just an iron oxide. <clears throat> so Amazonite gets its color uh, because of lead. There's actually lead included within the stone. Um, and the beautiful thing about it, again, is that it can have like a variety of different shades within one single little specimen. It can have darker areas, lighter areas. And then there's those beautiful veins. <clears throat> and typically they range from like a white to yellow. Ooh, I love this little piece. <laughs> Very gemmy. However, here in Ontario, we're lucky to have some different varieties of pink. And it ranges from like a very light pink like this to quite vibrant salmon colors. So the ones I'm showing you now are from Quaddaville in Ontario. And these would be the ones that we would attempt to find while on my tour. Norland is not on my tour, but it is certainly a place that I believe is still open to the public where people can go. And gather some pieces. So the Norland Amazonite is prized more so for its translucency. Um, <clears throat> very, very translucent and glossy. However, the Quaddaville area Here's a good example. Has beautiful salmon lines going through it, veining going through it. And as an artist, I just happen to love that contrast of that vibrant blue against salmon pink. And when you're seeing that variation in color, it's actually because plagioglass feldspar is taking over rather than the. Um, the lead uh, micro clean feldspar. So just taking turns as they grow. <clears throat> Show you a couple of my bigger pieces if I can get them in the shot. <laughs> and these are from the Quaddaville area. However, we typically on my tour would not be able to find such large specimens. I actually purchased them uh, from the landowner. But they are a little bit more saturated with lead as compared to the Norland area, and they do have that beautiful pink feldspar veining. piece. Getting the lamps as I go. Ah, a little bit too big to get in there, I think. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right, managed to get through all of those. <laughs> so I hope you learned a little bit about Amazon Night, and if not, I hope you enjoy just looking at my beauties, most of which are uh, you know, hand collected myself right here in Ontario. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time.